Hello everyone, uh, welcome, um, I'm excited to be bringing to you some principles and um, some techniques on the work breakdown structure. Firstly, for housekeeping, uh, let me put away uh, this. It's, uh, this video is being recorded from uh, Hayani Consulting Studios. <laughs> I call it studios, but it's actually my office, yes. Um, it's coming from the company called Hayani Consulting. is in South Africa, in Pretoria. Uh, the main consultant, the principal consultant being Kenny Ramkobat is myself. Uh, been about two decades of project management experience within the technology space, within aerospace and defense, manufacturing and uh, engineering as well. So yes, we are a new kid on the block, uh, but we're excited to be occupying this space. But today the topic is work breakdown structure. Um, it was important that this topic uh, takes precedence, I think, uh, uh, you know, in front of many other important topics in, in, the, in the world of project management. And if you look at the entire um, project management knowledge areas and process groups, uh, work breakdown structure. We'll talk about it, where it fits in, how it fits in, what is work breakdown structure. I'll be explaining all those. So stay put. Uh, have your coffee next to you. I'm recording this in March 2020. So as you can imagine, uh, there is a coronavirus pandemic going around. Uh, we are sitting at roughly 402 cases in South Africa. So things are a bit tense, but I'm working from home myself, so I am safe. I hope everybody else is safe and please keep safe. Uh, it's a responsible thing to do and follow all the rules in your country. But predominantly this is made, um, I'm hoping that a lot of South Africans that are listening to this. Okay, so we're going to go straight to it, uh, work breakdown structure. Then... Um, uh, let me just shift to uh, presentation mode. I think it will be better. Uh, okay, no, 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 it's not. Okay, I'll keep it like this. It's fine. <laughs> it's, I'll go with this. Okay, so slides at a glance. Uh, there's going to be what the heck is WPS, work breakdown structure. Key benefits of work breakdown structure. Um, methods, obviously those are the techniques, and then case examples, and then some closing remarks on the work breakdown structure. Let's move on. We don't have a lot of time. So, again, what is work breakdown structure? Um, what I've tried here to do is to connect it to where, you know, um, how it fits in into the whole, uh, if you look at the whole life cycle of project management, where does work breakdown structure come in? You know, so if you look at the project management body of knowledge, the PM book, um, it's got some standards that we adhere to. Some, I mean, a person like myself who is PMP qualified, so we we subscribe to that standard. And uh, there is knowledge areas that are suggested by the PM book. Obviously, this has been um, structured and authored by a lot of consultants in collaboration. And uh, standards are uh, guidelines that uh, consultants and professionals believe and think that if you follow them, you've got more likelihood of project success. So let's move away from that. Okay, so I'm going to use my mouse now, moving from PMBOK to uh, the knowledge area. So under the knowledge areas, there's project scope management, which is the second um, knowledge area after project integration management then comes project scope management then comes project schedule but we're going to today look at the project scope management and under the project scope management we will be looking at the planning process group you know so so they create the process it's, it's actually a process called create work breakdown structure is under this project scope management but also under the planning process group because you've got five process groups, initiation, 
planning, execution, monitoring and control, and then the closing group. Let's go to the next slide. I think everything will fit in nicely as we go. Uh, the second explanation for what is this WPS, and by the way, I have to say it's very important, this WPS. You have to understand WPS before you do any project management. So let's go. So the, uh, I've, I've actually here listed key um, terms that describe the WPS. So when you see decomposition, uh, decomposition is obviously a process of breaking down a, w, a deliverable into um, uh, what we call work packages. Uh, so which I'm going to make examples. So please don't worry about that if the decomposition term is new to you. But for some of you who is aware of that, yes, decomposition is actually one of the techniques of doing the WPS. And then logical, it's another term that I've put in here. Obviously, I've put it in here to say we break it down in a logical manner. So very importantly, during WPS, you do need a subject matter expert. If it's electrical subsystem that you're trying to break down, you do need a subject matter expert in electrical. If it is uh, within automation, you do need an automation subject matter expert. So it depends. Then we move to... Um, uh, just want to be sure this thing is recording for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's going going well. Sorry, um, you know I'm just using this app here for recording the screen for the second time now. But I wanted to see for sure that it's recording, so it is. Work package is a term that you're gonna be used to when you start using uh, doing the WPS because it's the lowest level of work element or, or lowest level that you can break down a work, a work into. And um, if you look at, let's say you've got a deliverable and then you do the decomposition up until it's in uh, small components. That's the, the lowest component that you can break it in. It's work package. Uh, and then product analysis, I had to put that term in because you need that um, skill when you're breaking down a deliverable into work breakdown structure so it's not a trial and error situation here so you do need somebody's good experience if we are working on for example a vehicle and the highest level of a deliverable is to deliver a four-cylinder vehicle that will produce um, so much power at so much torque uh, for you to break down the elements just first into uh, maybe the level one work breakdown elements you will need a subject matter expert because they will know that hey this system is consisting of the drive trains consists of the body parts it consists of electrical components consists of the interior so the product analysis is really that technique and, 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 and knowledge about how the product functions basically but there is a technique to that. And then I've put as well the deliverable. Uh, deliverables is a term that you're also going to hear a lot when you do WPS because the first point is to have deliverables in your product. Let's say you've got a scope of work. Scope of work is to pop maybe to uh, manufacture or design and manufacture a power plant or you know a, 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 a you know, small-scale power plant you will need deliverables which are unique terms that you need to deliver and from there you can actually decompose up until work packages so deliverables are very important they are measurable in nature and you can deliver it to a stakeholder um, but they go with the design of the product or service itself and then the WPS reference code uh, work breakdown reference code uh, also talks to you will see on the few slides that I'm going to do that every work element after breaking down the work breakdown, uh, the, the, when you're doing the work breakdown structure, all the work elements as you're breaking down into finite uh, uh, parts, 
they will have a certain word breakdown reference code. And that reference code will be speaking to the level of detail as well. So let's move on uh, and hopefully it will start uh, showing where we're going with this. Okay, now I had to talk about key benefits of word breakdown structure. The first one being the basis. It, it provides a basis for correct and accurate work planning. This is very important part. Without the correct work breakdown structure, you cannot start scheduling, you cannot start planning any work properly, actually. And this is a, by the way, this is an error I've seen in my experience with project workers. They don't actually invest time on creating a proper WPS. Then they find a lot of problems in between there. So, um, also it's a basis for assigning work to individual subcontractors because after you've got work breakdown elements, you can actually assign work according to that work breakdown element. You know. Um, obviously, downstream, after work package, you're going to create activities. That's now under the schedule, project schedule management, where you're going to, you know, estimate, identify, estimate, and actually you're going to sequence the some activities. So you can actually break down work packages into activities. Now, if obviously, you're trying to uh, manage uh, to a very detailed level. All work to be performed is accounted for. This is a rule for work breakdown structure that you must make sure when you're looking at the WPS, that whole tree, that it contains all the work that you're going to be doing. And then it's a key input to scheduling, as I said before. Definitely scheduling, it's not accurate before you have your WPS. Whoever says differently, there will be... Um, it's not true. So, yes, you need to have a proper WPS before you can do work scheduling. Then, it serves as a foundation for project costing. Uh, as I'm going to remind you, you've got project integration management as the first knowledge area. You've got uh, project scope management as the second one, project schedule management third, and then the fourth one is project cost management so there's no way of costing before you can have scheduling so the project's costing will not be accurate if there is no proper scheduling which is based on wps as well and then the other issues is that all other project management processes are performed at work breakdown structure level risk quality communication procurement actually everything else so once you've got a work package, you are able to do risk management on a work package. You can do quality management on a work package, communication and procurement. So as an organization, you will decide what level you're going to be doing any progress reporting or, di work, or work performance data reporting. So that's now the key benefits, a summary of the key benefits of um, I see the time is flying, it's 13 minutes, so let me go quickly. Methods, um, based on the hardware breakdown structure, sub-assemblies, okay, uh, it's fine. And then, um, so these are some of the examples I had to put for you, so that you can see how you actually can do um, web breakdown structure. So, uh, the popular one is the hardware breakdown structure, depending on the environment and the type of product that you're producing you can actually also do it in functional system engineering geographical and then hardware breakdown structure is a sub assemblies like in a bicycle you will have the wheels you have the frame you've got the steering system and then there's components as well on the functional you are gonna go to functional uh, systems which is electrical software and then system maturity uh, development cycles but I will make examples of this uh, I will have to stop this video here and then we're gonna do part two when I'm gonna continue with this uh, I do and I did and I estimate the time it takes to do this video so uh, yeah it's, it's, it's uh, 
we will uh, work on that so stay tuned for part two of this as we move to that